As Casanova met his perfect match, or are those bed-hopping days not over yet? Heath Ledger stars in a BBC Two premiere tomorrow night at 10.30. But now, with some strong language, it's that man again. Hello there, and welcome to a very special Christmas point of view. Our first letter comes from a Mrs Susan Armitage of Bristol. She writes... Dear BBC, I can't help noticing that whenever Terry receives a letter from a woman, he doesn't seem to take it seriously. As a woman, I find bloody, this very... Bloody, bloody, bloody. <laughs> and she continues in that vein for two and a half pages, <laughs> blathering on about this and that, like they all do. <laughs> but our next letter is from a man, Mr Colin Griffin of Sirencester, who seems to have it in for all tell. Dear BBC, was it just me, or was Terry Wogan acting very strangely at this year's Eurovision Song Contest? How dare you, sir, <laughs> besmirch my name. I'll have you know, I'm a professional broadcaster of the highest repute. It sounded to me almost as if Sir Terry had been partaking of the old wacky-backy. <laughs> Libel and slander, Your Honour. <laughs> old Tell's only indulgence these days is a mug of cocoa and a slice of Mrs Wogan's lemon drizzle cake. <laughs> However, let us examine the evidence. Ah, uh, I feel nice. <laughs> I'm floating on air. Oh, sorry about this, ladies and gentlemen, but the fact of the matter is, I'm completely stoned. <laughs> Forgive me, mother. Did that go out? <laughs> Why me? I thought that was a dream. Oh, well, guilty as charged. Well, now the cat's out of the bag. You won't mind if I roll myself a bit of an old fatty. <laughs> Naughty old tell. <laughs> it's the Peter Serafinowicz Show Christmas Special! Bumper Edition. And this is the dining room. Oh, that is a lovely size room. Yes, they are big in these houses. Most of them have been converted into flats, so to get one like this, bit of a lucky find. How many bedrooms is it? It's two, but there is the box room, which could be an office or could be used as a third bedroom. Mm, I think we definitely need three double bedrooms. <laughs> Did I ask you? <laughs> Did I ask you? <laughs> Shall we move into the kitchen? <laughs> this is the Valia 220 Turbo. Now, it may seem like a calm, comfortable four-door saloon, but don't be fooled. This little Australian beast may look tame, but it can go absolutely bonkers. <laughs> Come on, Raoul. <laughs> It's got a six-litre V8. We're talking 440 horsepower. Pop your seatbelt on, Raoul. <laughs> it's stylish, it handles beautifully, and it's so smooth, you can even put your makeup on. <laughs> when it comes to boot space, the 220 doesn't compromise. There's room for everything in here, from Raoul's weights to massage oils. I've even got my whole collection of chaps in the nude. <laughs> it's as safe as mutual masturbation, but that doesn't stop it from being as exciting as Barbara Streisand duetting with Elton John. I love it. I love it like I love my life partner, Raoul. Come here. Ooh. Oh, top gear. <laughs> Christmas with Burr, Brian Butterfield. I had my Christmas tree specially imported from Mexico. <laughs> oh, a present for me? I shouldn't have. <laughs> How? <laughs> to Brian from Brian. I bought myself this present with my eyes closed, so I genuinely don't know what it is. <laughs> oh, a pregnancy testing kit. <laughs> Every year, I follow a recipe which has been handed down from Butterfield to Butterfield for over one generation. <laughs> Grandma Butterfield's Christmas Pizza. The whole of Christmas in one convenient dish. Turkey-flavoured chicken. 
Belgian sprouts. Mince pies. Mini mince pies. Baby pork cylinders. Chocolate currency. Nutty nut knots. Non-calendar dates. Indigestion tablets. Baracus vein cheese. Orange fish flesh. Cloud nose fruit. Hibernian Uggs, bread and ham deltoids, bonsai brandy bottle, and Christmas bon 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 bon. Mmm, <laughs> Christmassy. Oh, lovely kitchen. Well, it's not the biggest one I've seen, but they have made great use of the space. The um, fridge is set into the wall. Oh, that's a nice touch. And there's a fully electric hob. Oh, I really don't like electric. You can't gauge the heat properly. Did I ask you? <laughs> Did I ask you? Look at me. Look at me in the eye. Did I ask you? <laughs> Don't vex me, yeah? <laughs> Boom! <laughs> and you could probably negotiate the washer dryer. Shall we pop upstairs? <laughs> Christmas is a time of celebration for us humans. But what do we know of the festive rituals in the animal kingdom? These bears are fighting over a Christmas tree. <laughs> Pickings are slim, as they've left it rather late, today being Christmas Eve here in the forest. <laughs> in the Sahara, snakes celebrate Christmas at the height of summer. This snake is shedding its skin to use as a sort of wrapping paper for its presents. <laughs> These pilot whales are singing Christmas carols in the hope they'll be rewarded by their fellow sea creatures. <laughs> Touchingly, all the plankton they receive, they give to charity. <laughs> but perhaps the most remarkable Christmas phenomenon in the natural world occurs here in the nest of the tinsel spider. <laughs> For just one day every year, these amazing creatures weave their webs out of decorative tinsel. And as pretty as it looks, it is, in fact, highly dangerous. <laughs> this bee has become stuck on his way to a Christmas party. I'm afraid it won't be a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hi, I'm John, and I'm going to give you a guided tour of the latest revolution in computer technology, the Mactina, <laughs> the smallest computer in the world. <laughs> You'll notice it only has one key, but it still performs all the functions of a regular keyboard. For instance, if I want to type the letter A, I press it once. <laughs> For the letter Z, I press it, you guessed it, 26 times. <laughs> okay, how about punctuation? For a comma, I hold it down for four seconds, release it for two, and then rat-a-tat-tat. <laughs> This and all the other combinations are explained in the manual. <laughs> the Mactini is also a fully integrated entertainment system. It's perfect for listening to music, <laughs> watching movies, or even giving a business presentation. <laughs> Since I started this commercial, we've brought out a newer, smaller computer, the Mactini <laughs> Nano, rendering this one obsolete. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and it's coming into focus now. Well, your granddad is in a very beautiful place. He's surrounded by marble columns. And he's, oh, you like this. He's talking to Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> Such an old flirt. He's just made a joke and Marilyn's saying, Oh, Alf, you're so funny. <laughs> and now he's walking down the steps and, oh, he's tripped and he's falling. He's tumbling down the staircase. And now he's lying crumpled at the bottom, blood 
gushing out of his head. God. Shh, please, Clara. I need to concentrate. Kurt Cobain has run over and is saying, Hey, man, I don't know anything about medicine, man. I'm just a musician. Now the heavenly ambulance has turned up and the paramedics are looking at your granddad, but they're shaking their heads. They're saying, he's dead. He's dead again in heaven. Was any of that a comfort to you at all? So, that was the house. Any more questions? I don't think so, darling. Well, I do have another couple coming to see it this afternoon. Second viewing, so... Well, I mean, I really like it, but is it a bit too expensive for us? Mm. <laughs> Look, I know this is the most expensive purchase you're ever going to make. I understand that. So, if you and Hobby need a little more time to mull it over, you've got my number. Well, to be honest, it is a little bit out of our price range. Did I ask you? <laughs> Did I ask you? No. Buy this house. I can't afford it. Buy it. Look, I'll have to stick to the bank. Buy it. Look, please, no. Buy it. Look, please don't make me. Buy it. Look, I beg you. Buy it. Look, stop it. Buy it. You can't do this. Buy it. This is really unfair. Buy it. Please. Buy it. I won't do it. Buy it. OK. Great! <laughs> well, let's go back to my office and sign the paperwork. Ooh, I am having a busy day. <laughs> <laughs> In Victorian times, it was traditional to bake a silver sixpence into the middle of a Christmas pudding. These days, of course, the sixpence is long gone. Pretty soon, most coins will be gone too. It's a bloody shame. I love coins. <laughs> what I like to do is get a prepaid card and put sixpence of credit on it and then bake that into the pudding. <laughs> I'm making this one for Christian Bale. Hot, 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 hot. So there you have it, a traditional Christmas pudding, 21st century style. You might want to steer clear of this bloody melted plastic in the middle. It'll make you very ill. Believe me. For thousands of hundreds of years, man has braved the harshest oceans in the search for lunch. Now that ocean's most enigmatic bounty can be yours to treasure forever with Tuna Sandwich Monthly. <laughs> this stunning magazine will take you behind the secrets of Britain's fourth best loved sandwich. <laughs> Issue one comes with a free slice of bread. And over the next four monthly installments, you'll collect everything you need for your very own tuna sandwich. <laughs> sandwich for display purposes only and should not be eaten. Get down to Complico for complicated bargains this Boxing Day. There's Fridge Freezer, only X must pound, where X equals 1.6, M equals 37.1, A equals the square root of 5, and S equals pi. And store-wide, there's 20% off everything with the Indigo Cross, while 3.7% is added to all products bearing the Violet Cross. Sales starts at 5 a.m. New York time minus 8 p.m. Tokyo time. Christmas just wouldn't be complicated without Complico. I'll have that with double, triple cheese, please. <laughs> Oh, and 16 cans of Tango. <laughs> oh, by the way, do you have any skins? Oh, she's gone. Oh, hello there. You're back. That was quick. Just in time for our next letter. Dear BBC, I'm just writing to congratulate you on your recent coverage of the Edinburgh military tattoo. As far as I'm concerned, you deserve a medal for broadcasting. Well done, the BBC. Jesus Christ. <laughs> That's some nasty shit. <laughs> oh, God. I think old Tell's having a whitey. <laughs> to buy a Christmas card. Why? Oh, yeah, because the corporation
Nations tells you to. Yeah, let's do whatever the big man said. Which is why I like to make my own car. Be careful not to cut your fingers. I like to use kindergarten scissors. And uh, I don't know who that is. I will cut her out. Try not to inhale the glue. I have a little bit of red glitter. They're gonna love this. Say hello to the finished car. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, that's a good one. I'm gonna keep this one for myself. Honey, would you put this with the others, please? Oh yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas. So we have the occasional argument, but once we're finished, neither of us bears a grudge. But then I, I suppose the occasional row is inevitable, isn't it? Yeah, well, maybe for some couples, but Frank and I never argue. In the nine years we've been together, we haven't had one single argument, honest to God. <laughs> More wine, Frank. Ooh, oh, not for him. I think he's driving tonight. I assume that's OK with you, honey? Yeah, of course, of course. Uh, I'll just switch to water, please. Uh, can you tell me where your toilet is? Oh, yeah, it's just round to the left. Would you like some water? Oh, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to drink tonight! This was my drinking night! I'm so unhappy and I can't even get drunk! You miserable bitch! Uh, anything planned for the weekend? Oh, yeah, I've got a poker game with some old school friends on Saturday night. Oh, no, 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 we've got tickets for the theatre, I told you last week. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, well, I'll just cancel my friends. It's fine. Uh, do you mind if I open a window? Oh, sure, I'll do it. No, 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 no I've got it. Cool. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> the theatre's shit! <laughs> I hate the theatre almost as much as I hate you! You might as well go ahead and castrate me, you evil cow! <laughs> Just a bit of fresh air. <laughs> Oi, cheeky. That's my last bit of chicken. Well, you didn't want it, did you? <laughs> no, of course not. Of course not. Oh, drop my knife. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Lousy git. Challenge. Thank you. See what's in the envelope. Blimey, he's nice. <laughs> oh. Dear Gem Gem. <laughs> oh, it's from Raoul. Oh, what is it? Two tickets for the Scissor Sisters. My favourite. Raoul, I could just kiss you, and I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, you beautiful man. <laughs> Christmas is about giving something back to the community. That's why every year I like to go to the local youth centre and give out presents to the kids dressed as you know who <laughs> Princess Diana. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Brian, go and put the centre costume on. Well, if you think that would be more appropriate. Now, I need to check whether you've been naughty or nice. What's your name? Martin. Martin what? Martin Thompson. What's that? It's the sex offenders register. <laughs> so what would you like from Santa? I want some Air Max. I don't know who that is. Have this instead. A pregnancy testing. <laughs> Only use once. I failed it. <laughs> and Santa's final present 
is one that you can all use. Is it an Xbox? It's better than a box. Behold, <laughs> the latest video game console on the market. The Butter Tender. <laughs> it takes sports simulation gaming to a whole new level. <laughs> Get ready for Butterfield Tennis. Come here, hoodie. <laughs> a tennis ball is coming towards you. What do you want to do? <laughs> Type in hit ball. Oh, I'm lucky. <laughs> Love 50. Look, it's on fire. Oh! Somebody call 999! <laughs> to 30 second cook off. Okay, the clock's ticking. We've got two top chefs, Michael Alfonso, two contestants, Julia and Peter. You've each had five pounds to spend. What are the ingredients? Uh, butter beans, trout. Great, and Alfonso. Artichoke. Haven't got time. Okay, off you go. Cook, cook, come on, cook. Cook faster, faster. We haven't got any time. Hurry, hurry, come on. Okay, and stop. So tired. Alfonso, what have you made? Uh, That's you great. Do... Michael, you, Julia, what does it taste like? Well, it... Audience vote. <laughs> what have you won? Fantastic. That's all we got time for. See you next week. <laughs> I really hate it when I see Christmas trees adorned with chocolate and candy. I mean, don't kids get enough of that in the schoolyard? It's ridiculous, preposterous. So on my tree, I only have healthy stuff, but it's just as much fun for the kids. Vitamin pills, <laughs> salad, <laughs> seed mix, mm. yeast flavored tofu king. Mm. You see, Christmas can be fun and healthy. <laughs> Well, Greg, your CV is certainly impressive, but um, I'm afraid you're not quite right for us. OK, fine. Uh, thank you for considering me for the job. <laughs> and that's exactly what I was hoping you'd say. We need a cool-headed man like you on our team, Greg. That was a test, and you've passed. Welcome aboard. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> so I've got the job? No, of course not. I don't employ gullible fools. <laughs> That was the test, Greg, and you failed. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, all right then. Greg, that's the nonchalant attitude we've been looking for. <laughs> you passed the test. Have I really? No, that was the <laughs> test. You question me. No one questions me. Now, if you wouldn't mind. Greg, <laughs> you've passed the walking away test. <laughs> Come on, sit down. So, I've got the job? Yes, you have. Definitely? Definitely. <laughs> oh, Greg, welcome to the company. Oh, sorry about all that test palaver. Can get a bit confusing, can't it? Well, a bit, yes. No! You're too easily confused! <laughs> you failed the test! Oh, and I had such high hopes for you! This is ridiculous! Congratulations! <laughs> this is ridiculous! You passed the test! Oh, for God's sake! Keep your job! Greg, <laughs> this is the real final, final test. If you could hear me in your mind, then you will have passed. Really? Come back in, Greg. Come back in. <laughs> no! You failed the test! <laughs> it's just coming into focus now. And there he is. Your husband, Bill, did he like to sing? Oh, yes, he loved to. Well, I can tell you that he's singing a duet with... Frank Sinatra. Oh. And they're just finishing now, and Frank's saying, Don't go changing, Billy boy. <laughs> and Bill's waving bye bye and walking over to a building. And now he's being led into a room where there is a very attractive lady, Thai or Filipino, perhaps. <laughs> and now Bill's taking off his clothes <laughs> and he's starting to kiss the lady. 
And the lady's pulling away and saying, Money fast! Money fast! <laughs> now the lady's calling out and a large muscular man has entered the room. And now the man is frog-marched, Bill, to a cash point, naked. And the man's saying, Give us your pen or I'll cut your cock off. <laughs> oh. And it's becoming hazy. It's becoming hazy. And it's gone. Was any of that a comfort to you at all? Oh, news. I love Christmas time. It's a really magical time of the year, you know. But what can ruin it is if you have noisy neighbours who play their music till all hours. I like a party as much as anybody, but come on, it's half nine. But going round there and telling them to turn it down is not very Christmassy, is it? You know. So, what I like to do is to put it into a song. Turn your fucking music down, cos if I hear another sound, I'll come round there and smash your fucking heads in. Come on, be fair, it's Christmas Eve. You're selfish and considerate, shit bag. Merry Christmas! Right. Do you want your window down? <laughs> Step out of the car, please, madam. <gasps> What's the problem? Go and see this. Drinking? What? Are you drunk? You cheeky bastard. I'm a policeman, man. You know the police? Why would I act for them? If I was drunk, would I be able to do this? <laughs> In one, see? <sighs> Now then, can I help you, little girl? Have you lost your mum? This is ridiculous. I'm reporting you. Ah, hey, Officer Baxter, this woman's resisting arrest. Are we getting chips or what? It's not Baxter, it's a prozzy. <laughs> Shh, don't tell the wife. Please, please. Hey, where are you going? Hey, love, come on. Do you want to go out for a drink later on? Hey? Ah, oh, you slag! <laughs> Christ, it's the busies. Are they with chicks? <laughs> Brad Powerstein's personal training program for life. All right, here we go. Let's see how you wake up. Come on, that's it. Swing those legs out. Don't you quit on me. And we're out of bed the Brad Powerstein way. High six. <laughs> okay. And stare. And stare. And sigh. Now we're relaxing the Brad Powerstein way. I think it's time to take you on to the next level. You can do this. It's time to start believing. Okay, screw your face up and poop! And poop! And poop! Now we're pooping the Brad Powerstein way. I sit! Turn this down. Grant, Ed. Yeah? I have to write an essay about life in the past. Could you help me? Ah, uh, you don't want to hear your boy Grandad tell a load of old stories. No, Grandad, I love hearing your stories. Well, I remember I was still living in this house, and, oh, you see that clock over there? The big head was pointing straight up, and the little head was pointing straight down. Uh, this must have been, what, half an hour ago? Six o'clock. Six o'clock, yeah. Thirty whole minutes. <laughs> it seems impossible when you say it out loud. <laughs> uh, Grandad. Of course, I had a cup of tea back then. 
That's gone now. <laughs> Not a moment goes by. I don't miss it. <laughs> yeah. Television was different, you know. There was none of this bargain hunt, you know. It was all cash in the attic then. <laughs> <laughs> of course, your grandma was still with us. She's in the kitchen now. <laughs> Are you going to bring those biscuits in or what? I'll be through in a minute. <laughs> Granddad, I meant... What was life like when you were young, in the olden days? Oh, the olden days. Yes. Oh, I'll tell you what life was like in the olden days. Uh, let me see. Years and years and years ago, when I was very small, I was just a little sperm. <laughs> and I used to swim and swim <laughs> round and round my father's balls. <laughs> uh, happy days. Happy spermy days. <laughs> Do you know, I think those were the happiest times of my life. Me and the old gang. Whitey, Wiggly, Tadpole, Salty, Casper, Baldy, Chalky, Tipex. <laughs> Little tail and big tail, the sperm twins. Let's see. Oh, Milky! <laughs> Whatever happened to Milky? Oh, yeah. I remember. Dad wanked him into a sock. <laughs> <laughs> I lost a lot of friends that morning. <laughs> Hi, I'm John. And I'm here to tell you about the latest revolution in domestic technology, the eye toilet. <laughs> you use eye toilet just like you would use a regular toilet. With a standard eye toilet account, you can have up to 1,200 poos or 8,000 wee wees. <sighs> when you've done your business, it's converted into a file, which is then emailed to us here at iToilet HQ. We've made cleanup fully intuitive, so there's no need to carry toilet paper. You just download what you need, when you need it, right from the iToilet store. Press print, and you're good to go. Thanks for listening. And dunk! And dunk! Come on now, that ain't the dunking of a champion! All right, now I want to see you lift. Woohoo! Are we drinking tea or what? <laughs> sir. And sir. And Google yourself. You're doing great. Now I want to see you get on Facebook. And poke. And poke. And confirm that friend. Okay, it's 10 a.m. Time to check out some porn. <laughs> and be disgusted with yourself. And feel that shame. Come on now, feel that shame. <laughs> All right. Good evening and welcome to Agenda. I'm Hugh Hume. Joining me on the program tonight are Salvador Dali's grandson, Peter Dali. Good evening. The Minister for Extramarital Affairs, Martin Peabody. Good evening. The writer, journalist and broadcaster, Anonymous. Good evening. The inventor of the croissant and cinnamon swirl, Lord Mummy. Good evening. Noel Brick, president of the Murderers and Rapists Union. Good evening. Controversial robot, DS-141. <laughs> Next to her, Britain's quietest man, Les Teal. <laughs> and Britain's loudest man, Derek Bannister. Good evening! Chess champions, Brian and Ryan Roberts. Good, Good evening. evening. <laughs> Royal Highness, King Pong. <laughs> Award-winning director, Roman Polanski. Good evening. Billy Bones and Chico. Buenas noches. <laughs> French Al Pacino. Bonsoir. And celebrating her 112th birthday this week, Britain's oldest prostitute, Lillian Greyboobs. Good evening, sweetie. Welcome to you all. Well, I'm afraid that's all we have time for tonight. <laughs> Just remains for me to thank my guests, Peter Daly, Martin Peabody, mm. Anonymous, Lord Mummy, Noel Brick, DS141, Les Teal, Derek Bannister, Brian and Ryan Roberts, King Pong, Roman Polanski, Billy Bones and Chico, French Al Pacino, Au revoir. and of course, Lillian Greyboobs.
<laughs> I'm Hugh Hume. This has been Agenda. Good night. I'm Hugh Hume. Hugh Hume. Oh, news. I like to make a list of all the people I'm going to send a Christmas card to. That way, I don't send a card to nobody I don't know. <laughs> so, what I like to do is get a copy of the phone book and cross out everybody I don't know. Uh, honey, do we know Mr. G. Finkelstein? No. Do we know Mr. H. Finkelstein? No. Then, after six weeks of hard work, I'm left with a book containing just the addresses of my friends. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Wait a second. Honey, we do know an H. Finkelstein. Harold Finkelstein. He's my orthodontist. Oh, well, time to start a new book. Oh, please. With Christmas drawing to a close, I like to think about next year. And the most important part of that for me is preparing my New Year's Resolutions. Number one, start smoking, <laughs> then stop smoking. <laughs> Number two, learn how to email. <laughs> Number three, quit drinking. <laughs> Number four, I mean, number five, see more of my family. Number six, take picture of family. <laughs> Number seven, Play the Dane. Alas, poor Skellington. <laughs> Number eight. Hutch on Urg. <laughs> Number nine. Escape the clutches of Scientology. <laughs> and finally. Number ten. Lower my cholesterol. <laughs> so that was my Christmas. And I hope I enjoyed it as much as you did. And remember, for next Christmas, I'm available for hire as a Santa Claus or as a Princess Diana. <laughs> Call now. <laughs> Hey, up a dump a dum dum. <laughs> ah, me love a bit of the old heavy dum. <laughs> Our final letter is from a Mr. T. Wogan of Shepherd's Bush. Hello, Terry. It's Terry here. <laughs> oh, hello. Are you aware that you're stoned on national television? Am I? Yes. You're absolutely cane to the eyeballs. <laughs> That's why you're talking to yourself, you big idiot. Oh, God, it's happening again. Well, that's it for now. Join us next week when points of view will come from Amsterdam, if I've got anything to do with it. <laughs> Rastafari, Messiah, Haile Selassie. Jar knows me. Ah, I and I will be all right once we get to Holy Zion. Babila, Babila, Babila. <laughs> Babila. Hello? You've passed the test. <laughs> what? Oh, Greg, you failed the test. <laughs> <laughs> this Christmas, prepare for a great adventure. All you need is a bowl of crisps, refreshments, some takeaway, your phone off the hook, and we'll provide amphibious mopeds in Vietnam. I don't know who came up with this, but it's daft. I think it's brilliant. And a million pound motor in Italy. This is the greatest road race in the world, and I'm in it. Life does not get any better. So buckle up and enjoy the ride. The action commences Sunday from 8 on BBC Two. Iran. Coming soon to BBC Two.
Join Five Live for Christmas Day to find out what sports stars listen to before they compete. Plus, Dom Jolly and Danny Wallace look at Christmas traditions. And there's much more tomorrow morning from 11. 